Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we are taking a look at the Thunder Toys The Bloody Mod aka Bloodsport from James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Do bear in mind though, this is an unlicensed, unofficial figure. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you are down in the description, why not hit that subscribe? bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. We all know third party names are weird but the bloody mod? I think that might be one of the weirdest third party names ever. It doesn't really have anything to do with Bloodsport but it I guess gets the job done. We have a bunch of bullets in the background with this crumpled paper effect. No the box isn't damaged, that's just a print on the surface. Then down below Thunder Toys. On the side of the box, nothing special. Some more bullets, some dirt and grime, and a lot more crumpled paper. It's all part of the overall print. We do get a sneak preview of the box's construction though. A bottom layer, a middle layer done in black, and the lid. It kind of looks like an Oreo. Or maybe I'm just craving Oreos, who knows, but you know, the top bottom with the sandwich layer in the middle. Moving on, the bloody mod, warnings and legal info, plus this comic book style pattern, some more crumpled paper in the background, and a ton more bullets. I like to, when I can, try and pepper a narrative throughout the review, and the narrative this time is one question. Is the Thunder Toys version or the So So Toys version the superior blood spot in 1 6 scale? Well, I intend to find out. Because that's why I picked up both of them, so I can do comparisons. Now, I'm not some crazed blood sport fan that needs every single version in every scale, but I am a fan of the character and the design, and Idris Elba, okay, yeah, I am, I'm going to be keeping both of them. First in hand impressions though, this guy's really heavy, and I can already tell, there's some die cast metal here, I really wasn't expecting that. What we are going to do now though, is get all of his accessories, laid out in the light box, take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, well, this is kind of interesting. I've never seen this style of base before. It's circular, relatively low profile with a black edge. Then up on top, a textured print. Unfortunately though, it says the bloody mod. I wish that wasn't bloody there, but unfortunately it is. They could have literally left the wording off, just done the bullets and it would have looked awesome. But no, he printed that there and I'm not quite sure why. Then up top, a regular crotch grabber. This is such a sick accessory, it's a face-hugging Starro. Around the front we have his big glossy eye and we've got some skin, I guess? Some starfish-esque details sculpted onto the surface. And around the back, it's a very vibrant blue. Overall, this makes me so happy. I love little accessories like this because it's head sculpt compatible. So if you wanted to, you could pop this on literally anyone in the entire collection. Okay, okay, I know what you'll want to see, the two head sculpts. So let's cut right to the chase and kick things off with the unhelmeted one. Now this one I think looks just like Idris Elba. The sculpted texture for the hair is on point and the paint applications, they're good, but not perfect. Compared to the So So Toy sculpt, a lot of people, I know, they're gonna say this one is the clear winner. Cause people complained the So So one looked too old, there was so much grey in the beard. For me, I prefer the So So sculpt, there's way more detail, there's way more texture, and the skin actually has complexion. Whereas this one, it kind of just relies on rudimentary shading. Not to say it's bad, cause that expression is so freaking fierce, but if I had to pick one, I'd go with Soso. But for the masked head sculpt, oh, it is Thunder Toys, baby, through and through. The sculpt for the jaw looks very Xenomorph-esque, and it is super metallic. Compared to the Soso Toys one, it's a lot dingier. Now, the shape is completely different. The Soso Toys jaw is much bigger, but... This one, it gets my vote. That super vibrant blue up top looks incredible. We also have a little bit of texture down below. Now, unlike the Soso -so one, it's not a magnetic neck connector. So that means right off the bat, the articulation compared to Soso, -so, for the head sculpt at least, 
isn't going to be as good. Weapon time, starting off with the sword first. Now to make life for myself a little bit easier and also for you so you don't have to hear me say metal or die cast a million times, let's just go through everything that's metal here and now. The mini mace, metal. These two weapons, metal. The medium sized weapon, metal. And the mini weapon, also metal. Plus the sword, die cast metal. The blade isn't super sharp, so you don't have to worry about pricking yourself, but it is nice and shiny. Then the handle genuinely looks like it's expanded out. There's a little bit of texture in the grooves. You'll see what I mean when we compare it to the folded up version later on. Folded up version? Justin, why is that not here? That's an accessory, no? Actually, no, it isn't. It's part of his outfit. You'll just have to wait and see. Now, we do get two of his chest plate slash breast armor guns. They form out of his outfit in the movie. They are nice and heavy, and they're painted really well. There's some metallic gold, and there's dirt and grime all over the entire thing. You can rotate these front pieces all the way around if you so choose. Now, compared to the so, -so ones, they are a little bit bigger and also heavier because, you know, metal. Now, I do have to apologize to Soso because I said the yellow they went with was inaccurate because his armor is copper colored and these guns I could have sworn matched the armor in the movie. But going back and re-watching the movie, no, the yellow is 100% accurate. Now, the actual practical physical versions were copper colored, but the CGI ones, which I guess this one and the Soso -so Toys ones are trying to replicate, they were this yellow slash gold color. So now I feel really bad. I was harping on and on about the guns being inaccurate, but this is technically the right color. Now we do get this teeny tiny little pea shooter, which super surprisingly is really heavy thanks to the metal. Then the medium sized one actually has this rotating piece around the back. Does it really need to? No, not really. Plus, you can combine it with the BFG, just like in the film. You can rotate this front piece or remove it entirely. It's up to you. Nothing else actually moves here or is adjustable or functional, but this piece does slide forward and back, so fingers crossed that'll help with posing. The actual BFG itself is plastic, but seeing as though this is really dense and heavy metal, it is giving it a little bit of weight down below. Plus, there is a magnet inside, so when you do pop this bad boy in, it sits in nice and securely. The BFG award, if there ever was such a thing, goes to Thunder Toys. Their BFG is just a little bit better than so-so. Now, the mace is really spiky, so please be super careful, because this is die-cast, and those prickles could easily spike you when it comes to posing. The string is just a string, and unfortunately, on the end, there's nothing. Whereas in the movie, I'm pretty sure there was a metal ring, and I'm fairly certain the So So Toys one had that too. Not sure why it's not here. And lastly, a decent but not perfect array of hands. No closed fists, no relaxed open palm hands. They're pretty much all action hands, which I guess it's Bloodsport. Come on, you're gonna have him in an action pose anyway. There's some wrinkling as part of the sculpt, decent level of mesh-like texture. There's some metallic gold which picks up the light, and the skin texture, just like on the head sculpt, is just okay. In fact, there is a lot of shading here. I reckon the skin tone might be a touch too dark. What we are going to do now, though, is get Bloodsport himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And hello, Thunder Toys! Okay, I see you all over there flexing in the corner, but you have every right to, because when you deliver a figure as good as this guy, the right to flex is all yours. Now, starting off with the body, the proportions are a chef's kiss. I was worried the body would be terrible, but... Unlike previous Thunder Toys figures, this guy is spot on. He's got big broad shoulders, he's muscular where he needs to be, he's got a shape to him, he's not overly boxy. Then the outfit on top of the body is sensational. There are sculpted pieces, there are real metal pieces, yes you heard that correctly, and the paint applications both on the suit and on the rubbery pieces and on the metal pieces ticks across the board. Then the icing on the cake, we've already discussed the head sculpts, but I like them both. I was really worried. I didn't know that Thunder Toys could compete with So-So Toys, not at their level, but they've clearly stepped up. So going forward, 
I reckon they're going to be one to watch. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Bloodsport's unhelmeted head sculpt. And if looks could kill, we would all be in trouble because this expression is fierce as hell. Plus, the head sculpt, it fits perfectly on the body, it's not too small and it's not too big either. The neck is at the right length considering the size of this collar. The shoulders are well defined, so for me, ticks across the board. Well, except for one. I was hoping there'd be a skin tone neck, but as you can see, there isn't. It's covered in fabric. But technically, there is. If you remove the head sculpt, you can see... They've taken a bit of a shortcut, they've used a generic, off-the-shelf Caucasian body. So if you do roll down the fabric to expose the neck joint, well, it doesn't match the head sculpt, it's completely the wrong skin tone. Is that lazy, considering they could have done a separate neck and painted it to match the head sculpt? Absolutely, and it wouldn't have been that much work either. But if you are considering displaying him with the helmet on, as I am, Whoa, I love the Idris Elba head sculpt, I've already told you as much, but this is so mean, he's got the xenomorph lower jaw, there's scratches up on top, and once again the proportions are so good. So now I'm struggling, I really wanted to go with the Idris head sculpt, but this one is winning me over, please help me out, let me know which head sculpt you prefer down below. Plus, now that he is wearing the helmet, the covered up neck makes a lot more sense. Around the back we do have a lot of armour and the detail is insane and this is only the back of the figure. There's this very fine texture on the surface and there's some dirt and grime and there's some scuffing and a bunch of scratching as well. There's also more texture in the crevices and the line work is sharp as hell. Up top we've got some metallic copper with you guessed it, speckling of dirt and grime on the surface. And congratulations to whoever it was at the Thunder Toys factory who found an airbrush, because they went absolutely ham. There's airbrushing on the armor, there's airbrushing on the outfit, pretty much everything has been painted with an airbrush, and it takes this figure to the next level. On one shoulder we do have what would be his sword, and the sword, if you remember, is metal. And you may have been thinking, no, no way that's metal. Spoiler alert, it is metal. Even this teeny tiny piece is made of real die cast. Then down here on his sides, if you're thinking these are just sculpted rubber, no no. These are actually stretchy fabric straps, unlike the Soso Toys one, they were sculpted rubber. So fingers crossed they do allow a little bit more flexibility when it comes to posing. Not that going sculpted is a bad thing, you all know I'm totally fine with that usually, but when you can use the real material, why the heck not? It just looks that teeny tiny bit better. Now his torso armor is nicely tapered down to the waist, but suitably chunky for his pecs. There is also a bunch of dirt and grime. I've said dirt and grime way too many times, but you can see it, it's filthy. Now his shoulder pads are actually metal, meaning they're quite heavy, and his gauntlets metal as well. You do have a different gauntlet from one side to the other. It's an asymmetrical design. We also have separate elbow pads. They are glued onto the suit, but they do feel pretty well integrated, so fingers crossed when it does come to posing you're bending them constantly, they shouldn't go anywhere. Like I said, they feel nice and secure. Then the texture for the suit isn't faked. This is this very soft nylon feeling fabric. Unlike previous Thunder Toys figure, this isn't rubber. I was worried they'd be going with that awful, sticky, rubbery fabric, but no need to worry. This is full fabric. You can go crazy with your posing. Plus, just like I mentioned around the back, everything is shaded. They've used that airbrush to the fullest. Whoever it was that found it, like I said, congratulations, my friend. Coming down to the legs, but first, his belt. It is a separate rubbery piece of plastic that is free-floating. Now, there is a little bit of a mismatch in some of the golds and copper tones they've used, but... I've learnt my lesson, I went back and looked at proper reference from the movie, not just the Prime 1 statue and other Bloodsport merch. Yes, the colour difference between the weapons, the outfit, and the various bits and pieces, it's all accurate. This looks good to me. His pants are all fabric, and the texture, and the stitching, and, I'm gonna say it one more time, the airbrush shading looks incredible. Seriously, Thunder Toys, in the future, keep doing the airbrush shading, it's a very nice touch. Around the fly, around the panels, even in the crevices, 
airbrushing. Now, if you thought we were done with the metal, no, no, there's even more die cast. This piece that would form into one of his guns, metal. These little panels, metal. On the other side, metal once again, and even down here, these panels, they're die cast too. Now, his boots, luckily, they're a split cut boot design. Thank you, Thunder Toys. I dig the way they're sculpted with the wrinkling and subtle texture. There is some speckling of dirt and grime, and they genuinely do look like boots, plus the split for the top part. It does kind of look like a separate boot guard, so to me, it looks natural. On the underside, some fully sculpted and painted tread with some dry brushing on the surface. Very quickly, I did want to show you Starro on a head sculpt, so why not go with Black Suit Soups? He's mean and that Starro works beautifully. I'm really happy with this. I now need to find someone, not sure who, but someone in the collection to wear this Starro permanently. Now there is a little divot down the bottom for someone's nose to poke through and Starro is rubbery plastic, so he holds in place just with friction. I am worried about potential paint rub both on the head sculpt and Starro from taking it on and off a bunch of times, so if you do pop it on a sculpt, Maybe do it once, just slide it on there and leave it in position. That explains it, all the weird behaviour it was Starro's doing. No, I wish it was that easy in real life, but even wearing a helmet, Starro sits in position. Now there is a little bit of added depth there, just because that helmet is a bit chonky around the front, but if you do have a character with a relatively slim helmet, yes, it totally works. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, Thunder Toys Bloodsport, and on the right, the So So Toys version. You all know me, I'm a So So Toys fanboy, I love the company, I dig their work, they genuinely make really good figures. But this time, I'm having a really tough time recommending the So So Toys one over and above the Thunder Toys figure. The Thunder Toys one is taller, it's got real die-cast metal accessories, I like the head sculpt expression better, not the paint apps. I still think So So takes the win there. The outfit is more colourful, more vibrant, and there's way more airbrush shading. Versus the So So Toys one, the outfit is darker. Yes, there is more proper fabric rather than that shiny nylon material, hence why there's no airbrush shading, but I don't know. To me, I think Thunder Toys takes the win. Now, it's going to be down to personal preference. I know, there's going to be folks who prefer the So-So Toys one, but if I absolutely had to pick right here and now, I'm leaning ever so slightly towards the figure on the left. And it is based on the Limest of margins, just on looks alone, and my opinion is subject to change. After all, I'm only human. On the right, Polka Dot Man, also by Thunder Toys. He's a little bit shorter than Bloodsport, that works for me. Plus, same line, same company, same movie, they work beautifully together. Now, in the King Shark video, I made a joke, and we all know if you have to explain a joke, then it's not very funny. But I'm going to anyway, I called him Milton. I know, his name isn't Milton, it's Polka Dot Man. He's got another name that is escaping me at this time, but in the movie, that's what Harley calls him. And he's like, what the hell, my name's not Milton. That's why I called him Milton, I was trying to be funny. Clearly, it didn't work. Going over articulation, do bear in mind, this is my personal copy. After this, he's going in the cabinet, so I don't want to damage anything. I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Starting off with his head sculpt, you've got a ball peg at the bottom and a double ball peg at the tippity top. Looking forward to there, looking up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms do go up to there before the shoulder pad bumps into the vest. Going forward, limited by the multiple layers of fabric, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow on ratchets going just past 90, then a hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. The torso moves forward a touch, and I mean it, there's barely any range because this armour is solid rubber. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, but they're fighting me, going out to there. Swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knee going past 90, 
then for the ankle, a double ball peg, and oh yes, a split cut boot design for maximum range of motion. Good for forward and back, swivel, and a ton of pivot side to side. Wrapping up on Thunder Toys, the bloody mod. Stupid name for a great figure. This guy is undeniably good. I was so worried going into this. I love the So So Toys version. That is an incredible figure. But this guy... He's even more incredible, he's even better. The body, very nicely proportioned, it looks just like Idris Elba. He's tall, he's imposing, he's muscular, but he's not overly big, he's not a giant, he's going to fit in well with the collection. Then the outfit, oh my word, this is one of the most gorgeous outfits I've ever seen in 1-6 scale. There are real metal pieces that look and feel the part. It's got scratches and wear and tear all over, there's the airbrush shading I've already ranted about, so yeah, the outfit, I don't need to say any more, I'm really happy. Then as for the head sculpt, it's not perfect, but a lot of people, they genuinely prefer it to the Soso -so one. I overall prefer the Soso -so head sculpt, but this figure has so much else going for it that I'm really struggling to recommend the Soso -so figure. I still like it, but at the end of the day, if I had to pick one blood sport, this guy would be the one for me. All the real metal weapons, the fact that you do get both head sculpts and the outfit is full fabric for posing, but really nicely painted. Yeah, this one is definitely going in the display at the end of this review. Now, don't forget, not saying that you have, but this is a third-party, unlicensed, unofficial figure, hence why it's called the Bloody Mod and not Bloodsport. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own The Suicide Squad collection. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews, like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.